Good day, my name is Angelo. This is Nation Voice Tower. Your most preferred YouTube channel. How have we been? As for we over here, we're doing perfectly all right. Straight to the matter of the day. I gave you updates some few uh, days ago um, that um, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu was on uh, an official journey to Saudi Arabia, first of all, to perform a lesser hajj. And um, he also went um, to, in order to meet with the government of Saudi Arabia in order to discuss uh, one or two official, uh, you know, issues, all right? Now, I gave you updates on how he was avoided by um, the um, leaders of um, the state he went to in Saudi Arabia and all that. But a secret file or a secret, um, you know, revelation has, has um, erupted or has emerged from the visit to Saudi Arabia. Yes, former First Lady Aisha Muhammad Buhari and her brother Mahmoud Halilu Ahmad, popularly called Moody, have allegedly met Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Saudi Arabia to beg and to discuss over 100 billion fraud that has been hanging on their necks since her husband Muhammad Buhari left office. This is the expose, and um, we'll be bringing it straight to your your doorsteps, all right? Remember that this same uh, Mahmoud Halilu Ahmad, popularly known as Moody, was actually engaged in um, if a, a, a big sort of um, government scam where he embezzled over 100 million naira, all right? Um, sometime I brought you updates that he returned up to 40 billion and 60 billion is still uh, left unreturned. And that is the more reason why Bola Ahmed Tinubu is probing him and his sister, Aisha Mamadou Buhari. And together we're going to, uh, we're going to unravel this particular um, secret. Now, the truth is, they have been on the trail of um, Tinubu for a long while and, and they decided to put up a meeting in Saudi Arabia. I will tell you who organized this meeting. I will tell you what they begged Tinubu for. I will tell, him the, I will tell you the outcome of the meeting and I will tell you what their next plan is. Former First Lady Aisha Muhammad Buhari and her brother Mahmoud Halilu Ahmad, popularly called Moody, met Bola Ahmed Tinubu sometime in Saudi Arabia to beg for soft landing over the alleged 100 billion naira that um, her brother Moody looted through thick contracts and fraudulent deals from the Nigerian Incentive-Based Risk Sharing System for Agricultural Landing, N-I-R-S-E-L. Moody had allegedly refunded 40 billion on the order of Bola Ahmed Tinubu from the 100 billion he looted from Nersa. Mrs. Aisha Mamadou Buhari also begged Bola Ahmed Tinubu to take it easy with her and her children over properties they acquired fraudulently from Amcon, which has now been flagged off. Informants in the Aso Villa told us that she also requested that those she had nominated for ministerial positions but lost should be considered for lucrative board appointments. The meeting was set up in Saudi Arabia by Musa Shugaba, who is her former ADC, who is now Tinubu's Chief Personal Security Officer, CPSO. Shugaba, a very notorious police officer known for his deeds in the presidency, has been leaking information about Bola Ahmed Tinubu to Aisha Mahmoud Buhari. He told her of Tinubu's trip to Saudi Arabia, and with that, he secured the appointment to meet him. All right, um, that is that. I, I will not say much on that expose because I have a lot of follow-ups on that particular expose. So uh, we wouldn't um, fall off the circle, all right? Now, secondly, the verdict of um, the off-cycle governorship elections uh, has, has actually been um, very, very, you know, uh, different and very diverse because of... Um, different partisans that exist you know now first of all i would like to give um, the verdict or the reactions of mr clement wanko an executive director of policy and legal advocacy center and um, he feels that the verdict of the governorship elections is um that it was actually a big disappointment especially compared to that of february 25th now mr clement wanko feels that um after the saga that took place on 25th february uh, Nigerians were expecting something better in these off-cycle elections. Not just because it's an off-cycle election, but because it was, um, you know, done within a very, very concise sample location and with few people involved. That means INEC was supposed to deliver no matter what. But, you know, different 
uh, thing, uh, different stuff was, uh, you know, seen during the elections. And, you know, another thing was the case uh, in this state, especially in Imo state. Please watch this video and listen to Clement Wanko. Well, the Situation Room has issued a statement on these elections. The verdict is very unequivocal, which is that this was a huge disappointment. Um, we had thought that given the disappointment with the 2023 general elections, that there would have been some effort by INEC uh, to do a better job. But apparently this is a worse job. And I think for all of us, um, it is extremely sad to see elections conducted this way in this country. Uh, it brings to question how this democracy will continue, uh, how this democracy will thrive. If we cannot give citizens uh, the option of deciding who rules them, the electoral system in this country has collapsed and we have to go back to the drawing board. That certainly we can't build anything on what is now. Uh, the system has been captured and it is delivering incredibly sad um, results, not in terms of who wins or who doesn't win, but in terms of the process, mm. in, in terms of the abuses of the process, in, in terms of citizens' lack of confidence in elections as a way of running a referendum on those who have ruled them or mm. given a chance for people to take over. Uh, the country has lost its electoral system and we certainly can only revive it if citizens uh, ask the right questions and make the demands that should be made. Uh, when you look at the elections and you look at the fact that before the elections, those who are given responsibility for the running of the elections um, have been seen to be people who have been compromised, uh, where partisan political elements are appointed into the Electoral Commission, where staff of the Electoral Commission uh, and officials of the Electoral Commission uh, have basically uh, allocated themselves to serve political interests, then I think that uh, where we are today is a very sad one. And mm. this country's democracy cannot go any further with the kind of election administration system that we have in place today. Okay, um, that was Clement Wankwa. Well, this was another disaster, if you ask me. And um, I don't know what INEC or the courts who are going to receive complaints after um, this the swearing in or before the swearing in. I don't know how they will take this or resolve this. But these elections, these off cycle elections, especially Kogi states and Imo state elections, need to be cancelled. All right. I will not say much on that. Finally, Dino Melai, People's Democratic Party gubernatorial candidate in Kogi state, has reacted again to the electoral process of the off-circle elections in his state, all right? Dino Melaye was of the opinion that lots of irregularities uh, was evident in um, this election. In fact, he was like, the election was marred by irregularities, brutality, and misconduct. And um, to his opinion, he feels that the off-circle elections should be cancelled with immediate effect. Please, stay tuned for Dino Melaye. I will explain, explain that to you. Deliberately, there was an orchestrated plan to, for Dino to come third, distant third, because they believe if I come second, I will have reasons to knock right. off the first person. You'd so have the a stronger first thing, case. The first thing is that I had, I was, there was a meeting where that decision was taken, and I got the intel that Dino must come distant third. We cannot risk him coming second because he will have a way of knocking off what to do. So that is why I'm saying that Ajaka should not be excited mm. that he came second. Because all those figures from the eastern part of the country were uh, allocated to him for deliberate reasons. Because they want him, they are afraid that if I come second and there's a rerun, I have inroad in the east, I have inroad in the central. And Ajaka doesn't have that inroad in the west or in the in the central. So Dino must be completely knocked off, his voice must be suppressed, he must come distant toward. But the problem is this. The same thing happened in, in, in the presidential election, where votes, where they allowed Labour to win Lagos. It was allocated. Where they gave Kwankwaso Kano. It was planned. It was pure arithmetic because they already knew that they padded votes in other areas to completely demystify what happens in Lagos. And that's exactly what they have done here. Votes were allocated for Ajaka in the East to make it look, to give semblance of fairness and, uh, and, 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 and equity or something. But that is all fraud. Mm. There was no election anywhere. There's overvoting in 17 local governments, including the Jumu local government where I come. 
All right, Adino Melaye there, his reactions, well, if you ask me, it's because he was a candidate on the ballot, his reactions came thus, but not just because he was a candidate on the ballot, but because he was actually um, saying the truth. We saw everything that happened during the Kogi State elections. We saw different um, fake military officers, fake um, police officers that were arrested. We saw various, you know, irregularities, just like what happened in Lagos in, uh, on February 25th of January uh, of um, 2023 um, the same presidential election day all right so we cannot really draw a, a, a long line between these two because these two things are actually similar so we can actually say what happened on February 25th was like the same thing that reoccurred in Kogi State and Imo State and by Elsa State uh, on the 11th day of um, November 2023 this should be called to order and this should be looked uh, looked into that is what I'm saying, okay? If this government wants to show transparency, then this should be looked into. Because if this is not looked into, I will repeat, this will serve as a template for elections in Nigeria in no time. Please like our videos, share them. Don't forget to drop a comment for us in the comment section. If you're watching me for the first time, please tap the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you get to see me first time anytime I drop an information. See you next time. Bye.